Hello. Welcome back to Writing Off the Deep End. And this is Mary Thader. And this is Jeffrey Edwards. And we're, today we're talking about writing about war. So military sci-fi is obviously a huge genre. Right. Lots of books coming out. We were just having a conversation about reading Ender's Game. I was a teenager when it came out. Okay. <laughs> so, very intense. So, you, with your, your sort of vast sweep of science fiction future history, it's something that came up. Yeah, it wasn't something I originally planned. Mm -hmm. um, although I should have known, because my science fiction saga is loosely based on Greek mythologies. Right. right. So, so it's kind of so baked into the So the Trojan concept. War, yeah. like it or not, sort of mm -hmm. appeared along the way. Yeah. I ended up having to write militaristic science fiction, which mm -hmm. I don't know a lot about military life, although I, I now have friends who've had military lives. But uh, in the earlier period when I started writing this, I didn't have a lot of background experience, mm -hmm. so I had to do a lot of background research. For that. In this particular case, I was interested in training. I had a particular context dealing with a terrorist cell who had a kind of military training. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to, to think through what training that would be involved. I looked into that issue. Um, I also looked into, because I was interested in a kind of policing group that had mm -hmm. teams, if you yeah. like. And so I was interested in how the individual finds their way within a team mm -hmm. and understanding that within the context mm -hmm. of military uh, experience. And the difference between military and policing is a, a rich topic of conversation yes. that we perhaps <laughs> don't have this, the scope to get into here. Although, you know, um, for me it was related. Yeah, it's related, but it perhaps relates to how conflict and militarism are perceived or how they are uh, shown to to people uh, that the sort of face that they want to present. But I think, and especially in science fiction, you can't necessarily write about that without writing a, about more abstract sense. You know, like yeah. here you have this far future, and uh, I not have, a peaceful utopia. And I had you know. fleets. I have a fleet. Yeah. They had to build a fleet because mm -hmm. they had been several centuries without war, and so they, yeah. they were. Unequipped uh, for it, and so they, had to... they were Europe at the end of the nineteenth century. <laughs> I see. Okay, and, and so they were dealing with the return of conflict. Inevitably, philosophy or, or theories of history. Well, and, into, and, and the uh, saga is, is a whole thing about mm -hmm. philosophy and history. So, uh, and also, I had characters who had particular issues. So, the person who becomes the admiral of the fleet. Yeah. Um, is actually somebody who's interested in healing. Mm -hmm. And so you have these odd paradoxical things so that mm -hmm. she spends the later part of her life focused more on healing. But how do you become, you know, admiral mm -hmm. of a fleet yeah. when your real interest is how to heal people, you know? So yeah. this is kind of an interesting context. Right? Mm -hmm. so. I, I think it's always been true, but we're increasingly aware that war is about technology. Like te that technology changes how... How, as humans, we do war. Yeah, but in and the so, science fiction, you focus on that. But yeah. in the historical stories that I've mm -hmm. done, it's less about technology and more okay. about the people and the experiences. Okay, I want to I want to focus on that uh, too. But but in your far future, do you imagine a transformation in in war? I am. In a way, what the saga is about is the power of individuals to mm -hmm. have massive effects on the on the world but I mean yeah. in my case it's the galaxy but yeah. it comes to the same thing because the technology becomes enabling for individuals to do things mm -hmm. and this is the world that we live in today I mean the whole sort yeah. of terrorism existence that we have today is yeah. because individuals have the power a few individuals had the sure. power to destroy the towers in in New York mm -hmm. by commandeering a plane yeah. Uh, you know, th yeah. these, this is within scope of individuals to yeah. do these massive things, uh, and so it's a it's a struggle we have in in our our actual life today, and it's getting worse, not better. Yeah. So this is the sort of issue that I'm that is struggling with in my science fiction stories. More and more power can be in the hands of fewer. Yeah. Than so in the in in my world they can re-engineer stars, mm -hmm. and that means that an individual could explode many, many different stars, for instance, through technological manipulation. And, of course, that has implications mm -hmm. for... The stars are being engineered for peaceful purposes. Yes. 
But anything can be weaponized. Exactly. I, I think it's something we've learned in, in human history. Yeah. So, okay, so how's that different than writing about a war, a historical war? You could focus on the technology for the Second mm-hmm. World War, but yeah. my interest in the Second World War has to do with its impacts on people. And in that context, I'm much more focused on the on the characters, and not so much the soldiers in that context, but in uh, mm-hmm. on the, the collaterals, if you like, the people who suffer from yeah. the context of war. And the phrase total war is is recently coined, but I think it's not disputable that throughout history, war has involved everybody, and not just professional military, that it it affects everyone in the area. And right. perhaps, perhaps we just talk about it more now. Yeah, I do find interesting militaristic issues about war. I think it's important to remember the rest of it. Yeah. Right? And to bring the two into contact with each other in the storytelling. Mm-hmm. Right? Have you ever written a battle scene? I have. How is that? Because I, I, I think we can all think of in, in movies and, and or TV shows or novels, battle scenes that were just confusing. And see ones where the writer clearly does know uh, the strategy and what all their players are doing mm. at a time. Because I've written battle scenes which are like a, a like a policing action mm-hmm. with a terrorist group. Mm-hmm. There you're looking at a battle with a small number of people, mm-hmm. uh, and it's all about the timing of things that are mm-hmm. going on between the different groups, right? Yeah. So there's a series of events that unfold over time, and and the conflict evolves through these series of events. But yeah. the, each event involves only a small number of people. Yeah. Uh, but I've also written scenes that are massive fleets that are engaging mm-hmm. with each other, and there it's very abstract. You yeah. know, it, it has this, uh, I mean, you <laughs> referenced Ender's Game, it has yeah. this kind of um, almost game-like feel where you're, yeah. you're moving large groups of ships to do things. Mm-hmm. And, and it's less interesting in a way, yeah. because it has less of a personal focus. So I tend to focus on, even in that context, mm-hmm. individuals within that framework yeah. who are then struggling with their own feelings and so forth. And what about yourself? So we've talked a lot about me and my writing in this area, but you've also written about war. I, think. I touched on it in a couple of short stories. I wrote a short story once in which an elderly character, and we've talked, we've actually talked in the previous episode about my interest in, in elderly characters and just the mass of experience that they have. This character had lived through the Vietnam War. I, I mean, was, was a Vietnamese person. And so it flashes of it cropped up in memories. And she was dealing with a context where there was kind of an attack going on, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, so that experience was, a... was valuable to what was what was presently right. going on. But what I really wanted to capture with that is that I, I do think that during these cataclysms, everyday life is also going on. It's not going on in an ordinary way, necessarily. But, you know, one part of a city is being shelled and in another part of a city people are going to the market mm-hmm. to buy vegetables. All of these things can be happening at the same time. And I don't mean that, that people are feeling relaxed, they're under the, the stress of living in a war zone, but people keep doing ordinary things. And I wanted to capture a little bit of that. that. But then, you, you know, your Viking story also, in a way, mm. was about fighting in war and war, uh, warrior, yeah. right? So Ulfilder, um, the narrative poem, was a, a bit of a fable uh, about sort of old Norse society, but the main character uses war as a tool to consolidate power. Right. Now I leave Which you... is the way war is often done. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, depending on what's going on in the world when this episode finally goes up on, on the internet, that may be incredibly pertinent. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, fairly pacifist people in our lives, but we are fascinated by these issues and we end up writing about them. Thank you for watching. We hope you liked this episode. Next time we're going to talk about endings. We're the One of the hardest things for a writer is finishing a project. Yeah, finishing the story and actually getting that project off your desk. If you like what you're watching, don't forget to subscribe to our, our video blog with, on YouTube by clicking on the subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.